So the pitch notes for the new EAFC 25, which comes out on Friday for the Ultimate Edition, and then next week for the Standard Edition, the pitch notes have just been dropped. And there is one person that I am going to be absolutely crucifying because of this. Gordon Facker. I hope you're happy with alienating some of your community. Today I'm going to run through some key updates. This was released yesterday. So, early access. Here we go. Companion and web app launch. Starting from September 18th, which is tomorrow, you'll be able to kick off, you'll be able to kickstart your football ultimate team club on the web uh, with a refreshed companion app dropping on September 19th. Players who are rejoining us from Football Ultimate Team 24 will also get a little something extra with returning user rewards, which I'm pleased to announce are back. Fair enough. Okay. Something for the loyalty. Fair enough. Early access launched. If you've pre-ordered the Ultimate Edition of EFC 20, EAFC 25, you'll be able to jump into the game from midnight local time on September 20th on console and from 5am BST on September 20th on PC. Okay, so midnight on so midnight Thursday night into Friday morning. Fair enough. So EA Play members will be able to play up to 10 hours of FC25 via the trial, while EA Pro Play Pro players will get unlimited access to EA FC25. Okay. Worldwide launch. If you've pre-ordered the standard edition, you'll be able to jump into the game on midnight on the 27th. Midnight local time on the 27th on console and from 5 a.m. BST on September 27th. And I've just realized... Uh, no, 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 I'm not going to say anything. So, in FC25, you'll find a range of content to help you kickstart your season during early access, including Team of the Week 1, Rush Objectives, Player of the Month, SBCs, Special Evolutions, World Tour, Squad Foundation releases, and much more. You'll also have the option to earn season points in the new FC season. So, er so season points are basically replacing XP, which I'm worried about. FC... FC Season 1, Total Rush. Now, this is the new game mode, Rush. The Rush game mode that's been um, touted. In FC 25, we want to bring seasons to more players by expanding them beyond Football Ultimate Team and are extending them to career mode and clubs for players to be rewarded for their progress each and every season. So, they're allowing more game modes to be used to gain these season points and get objectives complete. Fair enough. A lot of a lot of positive stuff so far. Yeah, shock and surprise. Me praising EA. The hell is the hell is frozen over. Before we jump into the details of FC1 season, I want to spend some time walking through our game design decisions. So here we go. We know we have a range of players within the game who all play in a variety of different ways. With the FC season, we want to reward you for playing FC25 your way, whether it's in a single mode or across multiple modes. It's important for us that you don't feel forced to jump into another mode that isn't something you want to play. This means we've tuned FC season so that you'll be able to earn all of the mode specific rewards by playing just in that mode. For example, if you love playing online, taking your team to glory in career mode, you won't be forced to jump online in clubs or football ultimate team to earn the high level career rewards. Same goes for club players, same goes for the ultimate team players. Interesting. We also see that a total number, the total number of games per season in each mode differs quite substantially. Uh, so as you enter season one total rush, you can expect to unlock clubs and career rewards in earlier levels, with football ultimate team rewards available at all levels in addition to making up the vast majority of the later levels. We believe this decision will allow football ultimate team players to enjoy a new experience consistent with FC24 seasons and rewards, while clubs and career players will be able to earn a range of brand new award types by playing their only their preferred mode without significantly increasing how much they play each season. With the new seasons, we also want to make it easier if you do choose to jump into another FC mode. Previously in FC24, with an ultimate, with a, with a football ultimate team exclusive season, if you want to jump into another mode, you might have felt that it would come at the cost of building your football ultimate team. Thanks to the new seasons, 
in SC25. If you're loving Rush and want to check out how you and your friends would fare in an 11v11 arena, you can jump over and use any club's rewards you might have already earned. The, the progress you make in clubs will contribute to your overall FC season progress, helping out your new club and your new ultimate team club. Similar to XP previously, your progress through FC season will be tracked through season points, which are awarded for completing objectives in specific modes for balls between careers and clubs, or at a game-wide level, any FC mode. As we reflect on FC24, we feel that season rewards felt extra special when they connected with campaigns happening in Football Ultimate Team, in particular Team of the Season, Festival of Football and Footies. In FC25, we'll be focused on bringing this connection earlier in the cycle, blurring the lines between season and campaign theming, as well as focusing on authentic football concepts that expand across multiple FC modes. Okay, so I'm not sure what to make of this so far. So, here we go. Season 1, Total Rush. So, Total Rush is the name of the first season. Total Rush is a brand new season and campaign concept that emphasizes social play and teamwork through objectives across FC25. In addition, we'll provide new player items well suited to Rush. On October 11th, the Total Rush campaign will celebrate dream picks from some famous faces who bring together their style and skills to unlock new combinations suited to the small-sided game. Throughout the six weeks of Season 1 Total Rush, players will be able to progress towards the first Total Rush Quartet, which is Muriel, Fontas, Nacho Gil, and Gold. All, f uh, all those players are from the MLS. An interesting lead to pick. It's, it's 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 a bizarre lead to pick, considering they are about to enter the postseason. Creating dedicated places to compete in a unique compete with unique squads and improving incentives to play with them is a focus of ours as we head into FC25. In FC24, we heard your feedback that football ultimate team experience over the course of the year can begin to feel stale, particularly if you're coming up against the same lineup. Game in, game out. The amount of times I came up against a, against Mbappe's R9s, Ronaldinho's, pace abusers. Oh my god, it was the same players I was going up against every single game. Ugh. In FC25, we're introducing a brand new concept, the World Tour. Why? Starting in Spain, home of the Euro UEFA European 2024 Men's Champions, will deliver a unique regional experience each and every season. Each season will look to deliver a range of nation or league-themed content to help you build your World Tour squad. Who's going to play World Tour? Seriously, who's going to play the World Tour mode? In Season 1, you'll be able to take your Spanish squad into a one-nation life... Oh, great. One Nation Frenzy. Fantastic. Yay! In addition, keep an eye out for weekly objectives themed around the Liga, Liga F, and Spanish players. Throughout the season, you'll be able to add even more Spanish players, the Liga and Liga F superstars, to your club, in addition to Squad Foundation, Special Evolutions, and SBCs. This year's Squad Foundation players will provide... This year's Squad Foundation players will provide plus two league chemistry instead of the standard plus one, giving you greater flexibility when building new squads. Look out for the weekly Squad Foundations releases through season, throughout Season 1. Mode and reward changes. This I am about to crucify you with. In addition to the new look seasons, we focused on delivering some major changes to the core modes within Ultimate Team. There's four themes that are driving our decision making, making, our decision making behind these changes. Unique mode identities. In recent years, the purpose behind some of our modes was beginner to convert, was beginning to converge. We think the changes we are making to how you play and how you'll be rewarded will help re-establish a unique identity for each mode. Play at your level. We want to ensure that players are more consistently finding matches that provide the right level of competition. Reward elite play. This is one. F this is one that was top of top of mind for FC Twenty Four Two. On reflection. We think we got to a good spot with this one over the course of the year, but missed the mark for launch. We're making changes to improve 
this for the launch of FC25. Connected rewards. It's important that rewards feel connected to what's happening in Ultimate Team, so we'll be focused on delivering frequent updates to keep mode rewards relevant throughout the cycle. Here we go. Champions. In FC25, we're positioning champions as the pinnacle of high-stakes competitive matchups, and we want the rewards in, and uh, and we want the rewards in, and accessibility to champions to reflect that. Last year, we think we made the champions finals too accessible, particularly to lower-skilled players. As a result, many players went on extended losing streaks, and champions rewards did not reach their full potential. This year, we will not only be more challenging but it will be more rewarding for higher skilled players. Okay, strike number one right there. You are alienating you lower skilled players. Congratulations, you brainless idiots. That's strike number one. And the game isn't even out yet. You've screwed up champs to eliminate, to eliminate those like myself who are not even going to have a chance and making, it even, making champs mode even more toxic and sweaty than it ever was before. Congratulations, you brainless idiots! Champions playoffs. Purpose your gateway into Champions Finals. Watch this. As a gateway into Champions Finals, we're looking to reduce the role that playoffs play each week. Reduce the role that playoffs play each week. What's the point of having playoffs then? Strike two! As a in FC25, we are lowering the number of games needed to qualify for finals to three out of five wins. Three out of five! You needed five wins out of ten games! You basically need to win a higher percentage of games just to get to the finals. Strike three! Down from 4 out of 10. Okay. The rest of 24. Reducing the number of games will make each playoffs match feel competitive with more on the line, helping in two key ways. For players of a higher skill level, it'll make the process of qualifying for finals faster. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. You've made it easier for... You made it easier for the toxic swines that, that sweat all the time. And for players on a lower skill level, it will make playoffs a better reflection of your finals experience, ensuring that you'll only qualify for champions finals once you're ready to be competitive. Once you're ready to be competitive? What? Seriously, once you're ready to be competitive? Once you're ready to be competitive? What are you thinking? To help facilitate the above, we're making first-time playoff qualification more challenging versus FC24. For players in lower rivals divisions, playoff qualification will feel like a major milestone, whereas players in higher divisions will consistently be able to jump into the playoffs each week. In addition, with playoffs being harder compared to last year, you'll have 10 additional attempts in each season to enter the playoffs, bringing the total season entries to 18. Yeah! That's 10 more opportunities to go up against toxic people who abuse R9, who abuse Mbappe, who abuse Ronaldinho, and they greedy, and greedy, over and over and over again. This is why nobody likes you, EA. This is why nobody likes you. For some players, playoffs was a popular arena each week to experiment with new teams and players. As we reflect on all of our modes, we think that the ma matchmaking changes announced for life friendlies will better meet this need in FC25. Oh, damn it. Finals. The pinnacle of high stakes competition. The changes to playoffs will mean that the average skill of Champions Finals players will increase year on year. With this increased level of competition, top finishes in Champions Finals will earn you significantly improved rewards compared to FC24. We'll also be looking at 
uh, to better differentiate the types of rewards you see in Champions League Rivals to help the modes feel unique. As an example of these changes, you can expect below you can see the season run rewards for players who achieve rank 1 in Champions Finals. Now you're thinking to yourself, hmm, okay, fair enough, rank 1 rewards, what are they going to get? Uh, let's see, 200,000 ultimate team coins. A tradable 85 times 10, a tradable 84 times 10, untradable base icon, untradable 89 times 2, untradable 82 times 30, and three tradable team of the week players. In addition, we want to provide our best performing players with more ways to show off their achievements in game. One way that players will be able to do this is through seasonally exclusive club customization options that are only available to players who finish in the highest champions finals ranks. In season one, those rewards will be club nickname, invincibles, rank one exclusive, celebration, flex, rank one through three exclusive. Similar to playoffs, we'll be reducing the number of total the total number of matches by 5, which will raise the stakes in each match, reducing the amount of time needed to finish a champion's run. You are reducing the number of games. You are reducing the number of games. You've reduced it to 15 games. We'll also be simplifying the point system in Champions Finals to help you better track what you need to achieve each rank. Each win will earn you 1 point with no point awarded for a loss. Idiots! You useless, brainless idiots! Three points for a win! It's as simple as that! Three points! Three points for a win! Not one! That's a draw! Unbelievable! You may as well not have the points at all! Just just say you need this number of wins. Get rid of the points. Division rivals, here we go. Here we go. Your everyday destination for online competitive play. As you can see in the champions section, your divisions and rivals will play a key role in helping you qualify. Back in August, as line covered, a number of changes coming to division rivals in FC25, including draws, checkpoints, relegation, and legacy placements all of these changes are centered around helping you play at your level naturally rewards are a big component of that equation too with such a large fan base it's tricky to get the balance right for everyone as we think about the right number of matches for weekly rewards as you can imagine there's a vastly different number of average matches played in elite division versus division 8 each season in fc25 we're increasing the number of wins required for weekly rewards from three to five congratulations you brainless idiots and for upgraded weekly rewards, 7 to 15. 15 wins! Are you kidding me? Seriously, 15 wins to get the upgraded weekly rewards! As mentioned in the Ultimate Team Dive, we're also moving from a wins system to a points system to ensure draws count towards your progress each week. Five wins means 15 points and 15 wins means 45 points. But how are the checkpoints going to work? How are the checkpoints going to work? Checkpoints, like I said, how are they going to work? This change will allow us to substantially increase the value of rewards and rivals. As an example below, you can see the week upgraded weekly rewards for the Elite Division. 75,000 ultimate team coins, two tradable 85 plus player picks, an untradable 75, untradable 75 gold rare players pack, tradable 50 gold rare players pack, tradable mega pack, and two untradable team 83 plus team of the weeks. At the same time, as we are overhauling the rank requirements, we are going to streamline rivals rewards options into one single option per tier in each division. That will feature a balance of ultimate team coins, tradable and untradable rewards. We want to focus our time on creating exciting rewards, not on trying to balance them across 33 different categories, which slowed down the number of rivals rewards refreshes we could deliver in the past. Squad battles, your everyday destination for online competitive play. This is my primary game mode. And what have they decided to do? 
Correct. They reduce the gains. You brainless idiots. To make each match in squad battles feel more meaningful, we'll be reducing the number of matches that count towards your weekly rank from 32 to 14. 14! Only 14! There are people out there who will not be playing rivals and will focus solely on squad battles, like myself! <sighs> Honestly. Honestly, what an absolute joke. What an absolute joke. Of course, like in previous years, you'll have the ability to continue making progress on objectives and evolution challenges after 14 games with additional opponent refreshes that won't count towards your weekly rank. <sighs> Cannot. Fathom the stupidity of this company. No, 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 no. This dictatorship. EA is a dictatorship. You will do things our way, and you will pay us for it. In FC24, many highly skilled players found that Champions playoffs often created a low-stake environment for them to play in. This has been the intent of live friendlies, but previous matchmaking could have sometimes created overly competitive matches for top players. This also led to a lack of incentive for players to push to the highest possible rank in division rivals, as their friendlies experience also got more competitive. Yeah, friendlies was the worst. Friendlies is the worst. Then you've got your champs. Then you've got your rivals. That, in descending order, friendlies, number one. Champs, number two. Rivals, number three. That's how I rank those online modes. Friendlies was the worst in terms of toxicity. Oh, and speaking of toxicity. I put together a list of toxic player traits to look out for. In FC25, we're making changes to matchmaking based on form. Finally, something positive. Similar to the system found in Champions, this new system will take into account your wins and losses across all live friendlies, excluding house rules, to find you a suitable opponent. Put another way, this means your live friendlies matchmaking will no longer be linked to your rival's division. It's important for the long-term health of the community that newer or lower-skilled players are finding good matchups as they play online for the first time. To reduce the potential for win from manipulation, only full match losses will count towards the way form is calculated. Thank you! Thank you! You're getting rid of the rage quitters! Thank you! This means if your match ends before the full time whistle is blown, the loss won't count towards your win form. This will help ensure a level playing field and that the whole community is able to find an appropriate matchup for their skill level. As a shared player ground to experiment with different and unique squads, we'll be moving more objectives and evolution requirements into live friendlies to ensure you're consistently facing players trying to achieve the same goals. Finally, the only major positive from the game. Season points. And finally, we'll be removing season points, previously referred to as XP and FC24, from all weekly modes rewards, which were which we trialed in FC24. In FC25, we'll be exploring more ways to deliver frequently deliver SP through themed content that connects back to the season theme. You know, I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to bother getting through it. I'm not even going to bother going through the rest. 11 negatives. And one positive. 
What are you thinking? So, yeah. Anyway, the toxic traits? Oh, yeah. Keep an eye out for these in the next game. Because, oh boy, you're gonna need it. So, celebrating every... So, some of these are put into, like, are, like, connected to each other. Celebrating every goal, leading to gritty celebrations. Pausing, expecting... Pause... Pausing the game expecting you to leave, messaging you to leading into messaging you to leave. Constant skill moves, passing around the back, lone players in rivals or champs. Abusing the same players, R9, Alawai Ran, Ronaldinho, Mbappe, and anyone with 99 pace later on in the game. Not skipping replays, toxic in the DMs. Having, having a terrible team and having your best players on the bench. Giving you that false sense of security. Constant slide tackles. Five players at the back. Five defenders at the back. Bringing keeper out during the corner. Dribbling around the keeper to score. Giving the controller to someone else. Rushing the keeper out to prevent scoring. Cockiness with a significant... While having a significant lead. Celebrating every goal while having a significant lead. Time wasting by passing around the back. Intentional time wasting to end the match while one goal ahead. Abusing finesse shot plus. Abusing broken game mechanics. And constant sweaty goals. Be on the lookout for all of those. It, be on the lookout for those in, in this game. But they're finally getting rid of rage quitters. They are punishing rage quitters. Thank you! Finally! I'm not holding my breath on this being a good game. You know what? For my top 10 games of 2024... EA, you've already got yourself a dishonorable mention. You stupid, you, you stupid, useless, and brainless idiots. Kenzie Retro, signing out.